Hi guys, today we are going to learn how to install and configure the updates for Proxmox Virtual Environment. Download the Proxmox Virtual Environment from the official website. We recommend using Balina Etcher to create your bootable pen drive. So, the first step is to boot into your BIOS. Usually, F10 and delete buttons are used to go to your BIOS settings. Go to the BIOS tab and make sure that fast boot is disabled. Also check if CSM support is enabled. Change the storage option to legacy only. Now switch to the chipset tab and if you're using Intel chipsets make sure that the Intel virtualization technology or VTD is enabled. It is usually found in the advanced settings in BIOS. For AMD users, enable IOMMU in your BIOS. Save and exit. The next step is to boot into your boot menu. Usually F12 is used for the same. Select the bootable pen drive that you just made and click on the UEFI variant. Now install Proxmox. Click on I agree, select the target hard disk, create your password and enter the email address, enter your host name that you desire and the IP address that you want to assign. All we need to do now is to wait for it to install. Once installed, remove the pen drive and reboot. Once you reboot, the screen will display the IP address to access the Proxmox panel from your browser. At this point, you can remove the screen from your system and put it aside as we no longer need it now. Next, open any web browser and open the Proxmox IP along with its port that is 8006 by default. Log in with your password and make sure to enter root as the username. After logging in, the first thing that we need to do is to update Proxmox and all its sources. For this, we'll be using an unofficial method today as the official repositories require a valid Proxmox license. To be clear, Proxmox works just fine without a license. Without a license, you just cannot update it. If you're using or planning to use Proxmox for your business or an enterprise, then we recommend purchasing a valid license and use the official repositories to update it. It turns out that getting Proxmox to update from the non-enterprise repositories is pretty easy. Just follow these methods and you'll be good to go. Access the console through the web interface and make a copy of the pveenterprise.list sources file like so. Okay, so now we have a copy of the original file. If we ever purchase a subscription later and want to use the enterprise repositories, we'll be able to revert 
what we have done very easily. For now, edit the original file and comment out its one line. Save and close the file. Next, open the copied file pve no subscription dot list and change the line ever so slightly. Save and close the file. Now update the package lists. Note always run dist upgrade, not just apt get upgrade. Dist upgrade ensures that all the packages and their dependencies are updated. If you run just the apt get upgrade, things may break. That's it. Now you have installed Proxmox and updated it to the latest version. Now you can deploy your virtual machines directly from the web interface. Head over to our next video where we install Open Media Vault in Proxmox and set up HDD pass-through for perfect home NAS setup.